Hey guys, welcome back. On today's episode, we're going to be covering localization and translation inside Laudable. So I will show you guys how you can change the default language of your application and also add support to translate it to other languages or actually easily translate it. So let's get right into it. So the first step for us is actually to see how we can change the default language of our application. Now, if we go ahead, you guys go ahead and check out the config folder and look into the app.php file. So this is basically the core configuration for our application. If we scroll down, there is obviously our application name, uh, environment, the debug mode. If we scroll all the way down, uh, there is a section for time zone. You can change your default time zone. Generally, UTC is the best one. And then under that, there is one for locale, right? So this is basically the default language used on your application, right? So the default is always obviously English. So if you want to change our default language from English to another language, let's say Spanish, we can come over here and change this EN to the shorthand code for the, the language we want to change it to. So I believe for Spanish, it is ES. So I'll change this to ES, right? Now there is another one for fallback locale. This is basically what language is used if a lot of all fails to translate a piece of text to Spanish or it doesn't have access to it, it will go ahead and, for example, display it in English, right? So generally, you probably want this to be English. But again, if you have like multiple languages, maybe you want to change this to something else, right? But it's rarely changed. So let's go back. Now, if you reload right now, you can see everything is still in English, right? But for example, these dates, which we were, we were using a lot of carbon actually got translated to Spanish, right? So if you have any package or library that actually comes with translations, by just changing this to ES, they should all automatically start using your new language, right? So this is the first step for us. Basically, you can come over here on your app.php and change the default language of your application. Now, you can, of course, do this dynamically as well. I'll try to cover this on the next episode. So for now, we're just going to be manually changing the language here. Okay, so that's the first step. Now, the next step for us is actually we need to go ahead and move from hard coding these text to actually loading them either from database or from a file. Now, by default, Laravel uses files to load translations or languages. So we're going to be using files first and then maybe later on cover databases. So that's the first step. So let's go ahead and find, for example, this login to share your ideas uh, string. I believe it's inside submit idea dot blade. So this is it. So obviously, if you're hard coding your text, it's very hard to translate it. You need to go ahead and find every single uh, blade.php file, delete this and put the Spanish version here or your language. And then if you want to revert it back to English, again, you need to come back here and then change it back to the English version. Very annoying process, a very slow process. So the better way is to actually load these from somewhere else, right? And a lot will actually adds or provides this to us using its kind of language utilities. So first step for us to actually go ahead and use the language features inside Laravel is actually to publish the folder for them. So open up the terminal, uh, type in php artisan, artisan, lang, colon, double colon, publish. And if you hit enter, there should now be a new lang folder under your project. And if you open it up, guys, there is also another subfolder of EN. So that's for English. And it comes with a bunch of PHP files. So these PHP files are for the built-in uh, Laravel packages and kind of classes. So if you take a look at it, there is one for authentication stuff, one for pagination, one for password, and one for validation. So actually, a lot of all, all the validation messages you see, for example, on our login, when we click submit, is actually loading it from this file, okay? So if you wanna change these uh, validation messages, you can actually come over here and change them here, right? And I'll cover, maybe touch on this at the end of the video. So the way this works, guys, basically under the lang folder, you are going to have a new folder for every language you want to support or you are supporting. So for example, if I wanna support Spanish, I need to create a folder and the folder name is going to be the shorthand code for that language, so ES for Spanish. And then there's obviously one for e e English or EN. If you want to add another one, again, you create a new folder. Let's say French, we do FR. And then inside those folders, you can have as many PHP files as you like. And these PHP files are kind of like a group, right? So we're grouping our text or strings into separate PHP files. So they're basically easier to access and they're more organized, right? And each of these PHP files, let's say, let's open up uh, Aut. It's a simple uh, PHP file with a 
opening a PHP tag, and then we are returning an associative array, right? Now, each of these, basically the key value pairs inside our associative array, they are known as a language line. Uh, so the key is what is used to access it from our PHP or blade files, and then the value is the text or the string shown to our users, right? And again, this changes depending on the language we have, right? So that's the very basics of it. And again, we can go ahead and create our own as well. So in this case, instead of using the default ones that comes with uh, Laravel, I will go ahead and actually create a new language line language file under our EN folder. I'm going to name it ideas.php. You can name yours whatever you like. Again, this is kind of like a group or a category. You can think of it that way. So uh, we're going to add an opening PHP tag and then return an array, right? And then inside here, again, we can have multiple language lines. So the first step for us, I'm going to go ahead and add support or move this to our language file. So log in to share your ideas. So I'll open up the file. I'll cut this. And let's open up our ideas.php and I'll add a key. So the key, you can name it whatever you like. Generally, I prefer the keys to be short, but that's not always possible. So in this case, I'll just say uh, login to underline share, right? Again, you can name it whatever you like. So having it be too short, like login is not very easy to understand what it's even referring to. So I'll go login to share. And then obviously the value is going to be the, the text shown, right? Now, since we are under the EN or the English folder, this is going to be the English version, right? So if we were under the Spanish version, then this would be the Spanish version of that text, right? And I'll show you guys, I will do that in a second as well. All right, so now in order to access this, it's actually very easy to do inside Laravel. We can come over under our uh, blade.php file. And actually, let me uh, convert our application back to English for now, guys. I'll revert it back to Spanish in a second. We can go ahead and use a helper method, underline, underline. So this is actually a function inside Laravel. And this will go ahead and load a language line using its key. Okay, so now in order to access it, uh, first we need to go ahead and give it kind of the group, which is basically the PHP file. So we need to say ideas dot and then followed by the key you want to access so in this case we want to access login to share so i'll just copy that i'll add it over here so this will go ahead find our uh, php file so the default language is english so it goes under lang english then it will go ahead and find ideas and then under that ideas.php it will go ahead and get the value of login to share which is login to share your ideas so i'll save this i'll save this guy as well let's do a reload and as you can see, our application is still working. And to test and make sure it is actually loading it from this file, I'll go ahead and I add some random strings at the end. And as you can see, guys, it is now loaded. So instead of hard coding the value inside our blade file, we are now basically putting it on a separate file, which makes it easier for us to change, gives us the ability to translate it, and also makes it easy for us to reuse, right? So if I have this exact same text in a few other places, let's say, uh, for now, I'll just copy it a, a few times. So again, this is reusable, right? So if I have this on another page, I can go ahead and reuse it, right? So if I reload now, as you can see, we can, of course, uh, show it a couple of times, right? Now, in this case, it doesn't really make sense to reuse this text, but maybe you want to reuse this search, right? So I have search over here and I have search over here. Instead of hard coding both of them, I can actually reuse the text, right? So that's another benefit. All right, now, uh, before we continue, there are are a few other ways of loading your translations. So I showed you guys the underline, underline, and you may have seen this on in the default the welcome.blade.php file that comes with Laravel. Now, you can also go ahead and do that using a method of trans, which is for translate. And it does the exact same thing as underline, underline. As a matter of fact, underline, underline calls this method or this function. So they do kind of the exact same thing. As you can see, it looks exactly the same, right? And then there is another way, which is using a blade directive of lang. And again, does the exact same thing. You can just pass it in the key. Uh, let me remove this so you guys can see how it looks. And this also does the exact same thing, right? So it's kind of up to you which one you want to use. I'm personally used to using the underline underline. So I'll go ahead and I use this one. But you can go ahead and use the other ones as well if you prefer them, right? Again, the lang and trans are a bit more descriptive, so you immediately know that they are referring to translation or language. 
with underline underline it might be a little bit confusing for people new to laravel i totally understand that so i'll leave it to you guys to decide which one you prefer okay so now that we have moved our uh, kind of strings to our language files and again you on a on an actual application you want to do this for all the text on your application or at least all the ones you want to have the ability to translate so for now i'll just go ahead and i like, move this one to save time so okay so how can you then go ahead and actually translate this to spanish right so let's go ahead and on our app.blade app.php config let's go ahead and now move from english to spanish so i'll move that from en to es for spanish and if i reload obviously these dates change so we know that language our language did indeed successfully change however this is using english version right so as i previously mentioned if a lot of all is unable to find a string or a language on the default language you have specified for example if Laravel isn't able to find a language line or translation in spanish it will default back to english right so in this case Laravel is intelligent enough instead of not showing anything it is showing the english version which is nice right but obviously we want to change this to spanish so how can we do that well first step for us obviously is we need to go ahead and create that es folder which we already have and then we need to go ahead and create this ideas.php file inside our es folder as well but instead of creating it we can actually copy it and paste it over so i have pasted it so these two files should technically be exactly the same they should have all the exact same language lines with the exact same keys the only difference is the values change so the values go from being uh, in english to being in spanish right so that's the process so now i just need to go ahead and translate this from english to spanish let me close the english version so it doesn't get confusing so now we'll just need to translate this. So I'll go ahead and use Google Translate, guys. So let's do Google Translate. I'll, I'll put this here. Let's translate it to Spanish. I do not speak Spanish, so I'll just use this one. And that's the process, guys, basically, right? So if you had more, of course, you would go ahead and translate those as well. In this case, we only have one language line, so I'll just translate this one. Okay, so let's save it. Let's go back. Previously, it was loading the English version. If I reload now, we get the Spanish version. So that's the process, guys. Basically, uh, you go ahead on your blade files and you use the syntax, either underline, underline, or the lang directive, or trans. And you basically tell Laravel to load it from your language files. Next up, you need to go ahead and actually define those language lines under English. Right? So in this case, uh, you can either put it inside existing folders or create new PHP files. So in this case, we created a new one for ideas. These are kind of like groups or categories used to organize our language lines so they are easier to access and also translate so we are going to put basically uh, language lines that are similar in the same php file or in the same group right so in this case i put all the ones uh, related to ideas in the ideas.php right if you don't care you can maybe have like one general and put everything in one general file or all file up to you guys and then after that, in order to support a second language, you need to go ahead and actually create a new folder, copy all these PHP files, uh, or all the ones you want to translate. So in this case, I copied ideas.php and I pasted it inside our ES folder or the new language. Open up that and then translate all the values from English to your desired language, in this case, Spanish, right? So that's the process, guys. And again, generally, when you start building your application, you obviously have this in mind. So instead of going back and changing these into your language lines, by default, you will always be going and doing something like this, right? Underline, underline, and then from the start, actually put all your uh, text or strings inside the language files. So that's it. And then last step, if you want to change the default language of your application, you can do that inside your app config file. Come over here, change the locale from English to your desired language or you can change this anytime you want so again this is spanish this is very easy to use so i can switch between english or spanish anytime i want right so you can ship your application and have support for multiple languages now right now we are changing this kind of manually by updating our config file you can actually have this be dy dynamically so maybe you have on your footer or maybe at the top some drop down that allows you to change your language we can also do that dynamically now, I don't want this video to be too long, so in case you don't actually care about that. So on the next episode, I'll show you guys how you can actually change your 
language dynamically. So that's going to be for the next episode. So if you guys have any questions so far about what we covered today, you can ask me in the comment section below. As always, if you enjoyed the video, you can make sure you like the video and subscribe if you still haven't. And I'll see you guys on the next episode. Have a great day. Bye.